What's coming on, my PT peeps? My walking dead family, my fighters. I'm one eye bright, also known as PT. Don't know if I'm winking or blinking, but I'm definitely thinking about the Walking Dead season 11, episode one review, recap, breakdown, spoiler warning for all things Walking Dead, obviously. But have you seen the episode yet? If you haven't, we're going to talk about it, so I don't want to ruin it for you. And it's August 15th as I make this video and post it. And some people are like, well, wait a second. It was supposed to come on the 22nd. Well, AMC Plus members got to see it early on the 15th. So that's why we got to see it. Hit that subscribe button, like, share, subscribe, and donate. Help support the PT channel any way that you can. If you love The Walking Dead, I think you'll enjoy the channel. Now, the episode starts with Daryl at the army base. This is the opening shot. And then we get to see that they're on the roof. Our group gets lowered down while well, all women get lowered down. It's a badass fight scene, action packed stuff. Well, the walkers that are there are dormant. Their lurkers are what Angela Kang was calling them in the post episode interview. And as our group here, Magna, Kelly, Rosita, Lydia, Carol, Maggie, they're around taking out walkers silently. But more importantly, they're trying not to make noise to wake up the walkers. They're like in sleep mode. So our group is going around like here, they're trying to take out the walkers in sync, like one, two, get them, take them out. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of frustrating. It's like, you could just go around, take out all the walkers and then get the supplies. Cause they're here to get the MREs, the supplies, the guns, the ammo, everything here. They should be clearing this place out. They should kill all the walkers and take everything in here for Alexandria because that's why they're here. I mean, you should take everything you can from this place. Go back, take as many trips as possible. But the walkers wake up because Daryl cuts his forearm with the wheel or something and the blood drips down, wakes up the walker, and then they all wake up. And it's overly dramatic and no one dies. No one dies in this episode except for the walkers. And they have a bunch of weapons and arrows to take out all the walkers. But you know, it's over dramatic. Like I said, it's like, oh, are they going to make it out? Oh, Carol's about to get away. Nope. I got to grab these MREs and they get the stuff and it's over the top and they have the arrows and it, it's, it's cool. It's a good action sequence. Sorry for the blurry picture here, but they get away with MREs, some rifles, and they mow down the walkers. And it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool way to start off the season. It is woman empowerment, badass chicks, because all the people down here in the danger zone are women. And I understand they did that to lower the women down because they're lighter. There's Jerry, Daryl, and you know Elijah and a bunch of people on the roof, lowering the women down and then pulling them back up. I don't think a woman could pick up Jerry in my opinion, but you never know. It's a good action pack sequence, you know, to me over dramatic. And I was like thinking to myself, why don't they just take out the walkers and then take their time getting everything? But they get it stuff. They go back to Alexandria with the bags of MREs. And this is the bulk of the group that was there. And then they go back to Alexandria where they're still trying to rebuild it after the Whisperer War. And, you know, it kind of makes sense for the story. Daryl is actually greeting RJ and Judith as he's coming back. He's not leaving. So he's actually saying hello to them as he comes back to safety. Negan grabs the bag of MREs. He and Father Gabriel are in charge of divvying out the food. And you can tell the tension between Maggie and Negan. That's definitely coming around in the episode. And I have to say that Negan has his funny one-liners and I was cracking up because of him in the episode. You can tell the divide. It's Negan versus everybody. Even when he saves Gage, they don't even care. Herschel's cute, you know, he comes over to Maggie and you can see Maggie was looking at Negan and was like, mm, I hate that guy. And I believe the next scene is Herschel coming over to her. So it's like, I hate this guy, but I'm doing this for my son. Glenn Ree lives on, right? Through his son, Herschel is what I'm saying. But the group that is here, it's impactful. We get some new cast members that are part of Maggie's location. The Meridian is what she's calling it. She doesn't name the Reapers. She says that the group that took the Meridian from them. They come at night and once you see them, it's too late. So the Reapers are probably going to attack Alexandria or wherever at nighttime. Like I said, they referenced the Meridian, what happened before a little bit. We're getting a little bit of piece of information what Maggie was and where she went when she left the group. Duncan is the guy, the big guy in the back. I have a similar character in my book series, Fight For Us. Still, they check it out if you wanna know more. Duncan, Frost, and Agatha are people from the Meridian and they're some of Maggie's best fighters, which is pretty cool. They decide to go to the Meridian, but it's storming and it's raining, so they get sidetracked and actually go down into the Metro. 
This isn't part of the plan. They go there to get out of the rain. Negan knows the area better than everybody, supposedly. That's why they brought him along. But the tension is there. Like, Raggy and Negan should not be in the same area together ever. But it's a trust exercise and they need each other. And you can clearly see that's where they're building for the future of things. Negan, Maggie setting up. Probably Negan saving Maggie. And they work on trust. And then Maggie saving Negan, maybe, right? But Negan is hilarious and he's just, he's the odd man out, that's for sure. Daryl is like, what are we, buddies now? Like, they're not friends, they're not supposed to be friends, which makes sense because they shouldn't like each other. And the fact that Negan gets told off by Alden, who was a savior, is kind of funny to me. It's like, man, you were part of his group and now you're Team Maggie all the way, which I get it, there's a clear divide and it's probably gonna be a big part of the story, which is cool. Frost doesn't do too much. I think he jumps over some walker body bags and kills some walkers and they do a couple things, but it's kind of cool to see the new characters, Frost, Duncan, they both live. Again, no one dies in this episode. We see C. Thomas Howell's character as he was a member of Hilltop and he's with the group and then stuff happens and then he's going with Gage. So we'll have to see how it goes down, but overall it's an entertaining episode that I enjoyed. It's a good start to the final season. Negan's divide with everybody. I wasn't bored by it. I wasn't like, oh, this is stupid, it doesn't make sense. Dog doesn't really do much. He's down there in the Metro with Daryl and he runs away and Daryl goes after him. The divide with Negan and the water line, every time Negan talks, he has a point and I agree with him. So I don't know if I'm team Negan or what, Again, see Thomas Hell's character doesn't do much, but we'll see, is he a Reaper or not? Can't wait to find out. But the fact that Negan is against everybody makes sense. And Negan's a survivor, so he's going to look out for his best interest. But the fact that Negan calls out Maggie in the episode and says, she brought me here to take me out and away from Alexandria. It's true probably, right? I think Maggie wants to take out Negan and Negan's smart. Negan's probably one of the smartest people in the group, but again, He's a survivor and he's trying to lead, especially with the water line and the flooding, even though it doesn't flood and there's no danger of that, but he's trying to keep the group safe and really himself safe. But Daryl calls him out on it and Daryl punches him in the face. When Negan mentions Glenn, we see the body bag walkers. We don't know who did this, but Negan brings up the point. Did you ever think of the people who did this to these walkers are still here? I know I did. And again, I'm like, Negan's right. Daryl takes out a walker in the bag. You see the throat was cut, and so they weren't making any noise. So whoever did this, most likely the Reapers, because I'm guessing that the Reapers are clearly involved here because they were going to the Meridian, and if they were on the way there, they stopped here on the way to the place. The Meridian is Maggie's place before she came back to Alexandria. So hopefully Georgie will be mentioned. There was no mention of her, but I'm like, oh, it'd be nice to have this character come back around or at least mention that she had it. She picks up the bunny and Negan's doing his little spiel and she gets distracted. Nice call back to Teddy Bear Girl. And then we have Gage who is about to get taken up by a walker. Like the biggest walker I've ever seen on the show. He was like bloated and big and fat. Reminds me of the well walker, but Negan comes to save him. And as he's holding him back with a crowbar, I'm like, Gage, why didn't you help Negan? What are you doing? Negan's about to like take the walker out and no one's helping him at all, which I kind of felt bad for Negan. But Maggie is running things because she was voted by everybody to do it, to lead. And I wonder if that rubbed any people, any viewers like the wrong way. Daryl is being Daryl. He's there to help out, you know, and he does a lot of big things in the episode. Then we get to the Commonwealth and they do kind of intersperse this stuff with team family, Alexandria and the Commonwealth. They're taken to an outpost for interrogation and it's interesting, it was entertaining. It was one of the best parts for me. And it's not like it's not enough that you don't feel like, hmm, I wish there was more to it. We find out more about the Commonwealth, the auditors. The woman does all the talking, the guy doesn't say anything at all. I don't know who their names are, but it doesn't really matter. They're asking Eugene and Yumiko and Ezekiel and Princess all the same questions over and over and over and all this time goes by. Mercer is standing there and I'm wondering why Mercer is there and why he's not looking after the Miltons. Because in the comic he does. I liked hearing about the backstories about Eugene, Yumiko, Princess, and everybody. And Yumiko is a lawyer from Oxford and Harvard. And it's pretty cool to see more of the backstories. We knew about Ezekiel and the zookeeper. Eugene remembers everything. Princess is kooky, but she was hilarious. I was cracking up. 
she knows things about guards and it works out because here, this is Yumiko and Eugene in the Commonwealth armor. And that was really Princess's plan and her knowing. They find out about the money, the $2 bill. I kind of hope she gets that back because it's meaningful to her. We see the missing persons board. Is Tommy connected with Yumiko? And since she found that, that's gonna be their connection into the Commonwealth. Because on the board, it says expedited processing. If you know somebody on there, and that's Yumiko's brother, Tommy. So that's gonna be their ticket into the Commonwealth, most likely next episode. But the episode ends when our group goes to this blocked off area with the train car. They're trying to get into the train car, but it's surrounded on the outside by fallen debris and concrete. They can't get into the train car while the walkers are coming towards them, so they have to go on top of the train car because the doors won't open. Very dramatic, they're killing walkers as they're approaching them, and we're not sure where they came from. It ends with Maggie being on the train car. Negan could have saved her. Maggie's the last one to get on the train car. Walkers are grabbing at her and she's kicking them off. Negan looks at her and sees that she's struggling, and then he walks away, and then her hand slips, and then boop, see you next week. So does Negan save her next episode, Akron part two? Pretty sure Maggie's not gonna die because we have a lot more stuff and story with her, Negan, and the rest of the characters. But let me know your thoughts, post your comments below. Overall, season 11, episode one is a great start to the final season of The Walking Dead. Stay safe and tell them, Daryl. Yeah, we love you.